assure you, I mean you no harm. Who are you? Who? Who is but the form following the function of what, and what I am is a man in a mask. Well, I can see that. Of course you can. I'm not questioning your powers of observation. I'm merely remarking upon the paradox of asking a masked man who he is. Oh. Right. But on this most auspicious of nights, permit me then, in lieu of the more commonplace soubriquet, to suggest the character of this dramatis persona. Fueled by anticipation for The Matrix Brothers' next movie and glowing reviews, V for Vendetta topped the box office sales with its weekend debut at $26.1 million. Only a million dollars less than the debut of the Wachowski's earlier blockbuster, The Matrix. V for Vendetta, the Wachowski Brothers' latest movie, is based upon the graphic novel by the same title written by Alan Moore. Moore is considered the Shakespeare of comic writers. Moore's graphic novels like League of Extraordinary Men, starring Johnny Depp, and others like From Hell and Constantine, or John Constantine, Hellblazer, have all become movies. V for Vendetta teaches the unsuspecting masses some of the same Antichrist doctrines that are found in the Wachowski Brothers' other films, Bound in the Matrix. What so much of the general public is unaware of, and so many Christians don't have a clue about, is that so many of these movies are based upon Satanism. In fact, Alan Moore, who wrote the books that these movies are based upon, Alan Moore is actually a practitioner of Satanist Aleister Crowley's Black Magic. Moore has stated, quote, I'd known about Crowley ever since I was 12, when I had my spate of reading Dennis Wheatley occult paperbacks and being told that Aleister Crowley was the wickedest man in the world. There are references to Crowley in V for Vendetta. Aleister Crowley, the most highly regarded Satanist of the last 100 years, believed that he was being used by Satan as his, quote, chief of staff, end quote, to prepare the world for the destruction of Christianity and the acceptance of the Antichrist. What you are about to discover is that V for Vendetta is a bold and almost prophetic picture of the Crowleyan ideal for ushering in the age of Horus in replacement of the age of Jesus Christ or the dying God. Aleister Crowley's Satanic Manifesto, The Book of the Law, was based upon the credo for the Satanic New Age called, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Crowley stated, With my hawk's head I will peck out the eyes of Jesus as he hangs upon the cross. In the book of the law, Aleister Crowley actually teaches the sacrifice of children. He teaches elsewhere that the best sacrifice is that of an innocent male child. And he also teaches the sacrifice of young virgin girls and the dismemberment of their bodies and writing the names of the demons upon their limbs. In fact, Moore quotes Crowley's satanic maxim, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole law, in V for Vendetta repeatedly throughout the graphic novel. Here on page 217, we see V telling Evie, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. On page 187 of the graphic novel, we see V after committing a string of murders and bringing anarchy, quoting Crowley again, stating, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Here we see V telling Evie that if she wants him to murder somebody for him, that she's just to pick a rose. He says, quote, To pick a flower is not a large thing. Understand what is being offered here and do as thou wilt. Aleister Crowley, the Satanist, Satan's chief of staff, as he called himself, he had stated that to influence popular culture, that his followers to get in touch with demons, basically sell their souls, and channel these demons to affect the masses.
always, we're going to use the Bible as our primary source for understanding. It and it alone has the whole truth of God contained in it. Let's look at Genesis chapter 3. We're going to go all the way back to the beginning. Let's look at Genesis chapter 3 to find the theme of the evolution of man to Godhood. Remember, the serpent was in the Garden of Eden and he was tempting Eve, the first woman. And this is what he said. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Manley Hall refers to this in his book, The Secret Teachings of All Ages, and refers to it as, quote, the mystery of human evolution, and speaks of the process as turning, quote, man into the estate of gods. There's an increasingly popular notion out there spreading around right now that's popular among biologists, scientists, futurists, philosophers. It's a term called transhumanism. It is the idea that humanity is going to elevate himself above what he is right now. There are other terms for this homo nexus, uh, which means the joining of man with a, a sort of a higher level, the evolution of man to a new level. Uh, another term for this, homo evolutus, which basically means, that, and all of this concept revolves around the idea that mankind is about ready to enter his next stage of evolution. And that stage is going to be based upon the ability of man right now, scientifically, to either alter or allow the alteration of his DNA. DNA, the book of life itself. This brings us to the Jewish mystic symbol of the Sephiroth. It is often referred to as the tree of life, and many Masonic and Jewish authors refer to it as a symbol for the divine man. The Sephiroth contains ten circles. These represent the ten kings spoken of by Daniel and by the Apostle John. These ten circles are joined together by 22 paths. These paths are representatives of the 22 amino acids that are formed in the DNA of mankind. It is these amino acids that form gene sequences and that determine who we are as a species. The symbolism of the Sephiroth shows the mingling of the ten kings prophesied in the book of Daniel with the seed of man, literally his DNA. It is these ten circles added to the 22 paths, the ten kings joined together with the 22 amino acids in man's DNA that Manly P. Hall says forms the 32 degrees of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry.